Now, there's a caller there from John from Ontario. Are you there, John? I'll take you now before I read the next article. Hello, is, is this me? That's you. Well, it's Kevin from uh, North Bay, Ontario, not, a, not just down the road from where you are. We spoke a couple of weeks ago there, Alan. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm also a member of uh, We Are a Change North Bay. We're finally getting uh, some political act, uh, some uh, political action going on here in northern Ontario. And, uh, you know, remember when we last spoke, they're pulling every trick they possibly can to set up this whole world government uh, thing. And, of course, they do like to have uh, testing grounds for certain countries. I'm sure you've read about Bill C-6, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. Here in Canada, we're now uh, this Codex Elementarius program where they're able to come into our homes without, uh, pretty much without a search warrant, uh, just to, see, to make sure that we don't have any illegal natural medicine. That's right, yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, it's sad, but you know there are some people that are that are starting to stand up for their rights, especially here in uh, northern Ontario. Um, like I said, with the We Are Change group, and uh, man. Well, I noticed Stephen in, in Sudbury. See, a few years back, Canada and, and the rest of the world was told too that. Um, the main cities, the other cities were around, should all amalgamate and become super cities. This came, by the way, from the United Nations. And then we'd get a common tax base, common inspectors, and common laws for all the, all the lands outlying in the different areas. Well, Greater Sudbury there uh, is having a meeting by the government, inviting all the people, and they, they bring in their change agents to convince the public to go along and how to lie to the public in a nice way. And uh, uh, what it is is a, a, a talk about um, what you now can and cannot do with your land, how you can use it, and what, how you're not you're not allowed to use it anymore. They've changed drastically your own rights on your own property. Well, this is happening across the whole country, and um, it, it's coming from the United Nations, by the way. It's going the same way as Australia, where they'll just confiscate your land and say, well, your land is now a carbon sink for, for, for Canadians, carbon outputs, and you get no compensation. They just seize it like that poor guy in Australia that's only one of many that's happened to. This is all coming from the United Nations. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, another program, we, uh, there was a presentation that was going on also about the uh, Project Nanook, uh, which was about the Northwest Passage up in uh, up in the, Ar- in the Arctic, and of course in qu- classic Orwellian doublespeak, the Canadian uh, Navy commander that was uh, this is the guest of honor there, he was uh, Alexander Grant, mm-hmm. and uh, he was talking about how we were trying to fight for Canadian sovereignty, yeah right. And then the classic Orwellian doublespeak later on, he said that uh, you, we're going to have the American, the Americans are going to be helping us, uh, help policing the North and help helping with uh, doing military, um, military uh, yeah. with stuff up up in the Northern Arctic. And then I started asking him if, if this was something that happened to do with Iran and Russia and having to, have, you know, setting up a military perimeter around around North America as part of the North American Union. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh boy, he didn't like those questions. No, but that was in the papers, member, in 2005, when it came out in the Canadian papers. It was called Fortress America, when the, the Prime Minister of Canada, the Prime, the Prime Minister of Mexico, and uh, the U, uh, U.S. President met together to sign the first part of the Open Amalgamation Treaty for the Unification of the Americas. And they said at the time that that this terrorism has been a a godsend to them because they want to go the same way as Europe and uh, they they get too much resistance so they could use terrorism as a way to integrate all forces, police forces, intelligence forces, the military and all the rest of it. Well, they actually said in the rest of the articles, and I've even got the tape here from television, I kept it, I played it on the air because the Americans had never heard this was even happening, that their president was signing this into law. And um, it said that uh, already bureaucrats on the federal level in Canada can apply for equivalent uh, positions in the U.S. uh, Department and vice versa. And it also said that as of then, 2005, actually it was 2003 that started, they were amalgamating all intelligence services. And lo and behold, in 2005, uh, FBI offices started opening up in places like Bari and across Canada were already integrated. It just, they haven't just told the public all about it yet. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know, and here in Canada also, um, we pretty, we're pretty much now under a 
flat out dictatorship, you know, with uh, Stephen Harper when he after he he gets shut down. Part by the way, this uh, this C this Codex Elementarius bill, that's what I call it. They're calling it C six, I call it the Codex yeah. bill. Um, when they passed con- uh, Congress, Parliament was shut down when it passed. Yes. And uh, that tells me <laughs> is that is that a bit of a symbolism here? That uh, you yeah. know now we are in control. We're going to pass these draconian laws. Now we're going to be testing these on can on Canadian soil, mm-hmm. like I've been trying to warn people about. And uh, we are change North Bay now. We're we're trying to we're going to be start bringing awareness about this to the whole community. Yes. And uh, hopefully we're going to be able to get somewhere. And of course, since you're also in Northern Ontario, you're also welcome to join us at any at any time. Yeah. Um. So you know, and also, uh, it's just. Amazing that people aren't waking up to this. Well, the, you know yourself, you, you take the average newspaper um, that's out every day and you get the front page, right in the front page, your main story is sports, you see, or, or they'll pick some one person that something's happened to, she found her purse and blah, blah, blah. Uh, some s- trivia that doesn't affect anybody else's lives. They don't tell you what they're really up to, what they're really going on about uh, and neither will Harper tell you that this year he signs into law that the final integration part, this is the year for it, 2010, in the summer they've signed the, the last part of this total amalgamation bill. So expect to see an awful lot more uh, U.S. Uh, troops and so on up in Canada. I spoke to guys who work uh, for the Canadian military uh, who actually patrol uh, the northern parts of Canada, and uh, they told me they're already working with them. Yeah, and I I spoke with a uh, I got a, a friend of mine that's also in the in the military here. He's been put on up, got under some confidence. He's told me a few things also. Some of the programs that we are going to be working more with the Americans to to, to not not only just build C60 mm-hmm. to integrate uh, both of our uh, of, of the militaries of the United States and Canada. Yes, but uh, it's going to be it's pretty much going to be the North American Army itself. It is absolutely. They've discussed a, a totally amalgamated force. I've got the articles here about the complete integration of the of the European forces. Just the same thing. We're just taking after them. That was the prototype again. Was Europe? We were to come second, and the Pacific Rim region was to come third. Yeah. Indeed, and uh, you know, is is there any other method nowadays, like short of like like Max Egan's idea of global non-compliance, that would you know put an end to all this? It's very, very difficult, as you know, in Canada. It's much like Britain. The people are, have never been an active people getting involved in their own lives and what's happening to them. Uh, I noticed when the gasoline goes up now, they don't even complain about the prices anymore. They used to always. Um, I think they're so mind-bombed in an expertise way that uh, they can't think very clearly anymore. Their attitude is, oh, so what? They've got lots of entertainment, mind you. Everybody's stuck on television with hundreds of channels. Um, and it isn't until it hits them personally uh, that it comes down to the crunch. But um, uh, people haven't a clue how things are really run in Canada. For instance, if you have a parent here in Canada, and I found this from a, a listener in Sudbury, uh, you're supposed to report if your parent shows any signs of Alzheimer's to the cops. And the cops come into your home with the combat boots and so on and treat you like a suspect. Yeah, and I, and when I lived up in Iroquois Falls, um, it was starting to get really bad up there too. I know Cochrane was getting really bad with uh, with the police forces. They're very, you know, like pretty much acting like much like Gestapo. Yes, that's right. And people are terrified now to speak to them. Uh, they're ter- I mean, these guys are wearing their full combat gear here. You know, the, even the ties and, and their shirts are black. That's the sign of the executioner. Uh, you see, we're not in a democratic system anymore. You're in a totalitarian system of authoritarianism. And that's the message we're, we're seeing all around us now. Yeah. But, but, thank, but thanks for calling. And uh, I've got to read this other article too, though. But call in again. Yeah, it, it's astonishing what's happening. But as I say, the, the, most folk haven't got a clue what's actually happening. And, and they say nothing until they personally are hit by some new law or, or agents coming into their land or confiscating their property or whatever. They just don't know what's going on. And they don't care, unfortunately, because they've been so um, fragmented amongst themselves. 
at one time people really had communities. Everybody knew what had happened to everyone else in the community, and they'd stand up together. Now everyone is sitting inside that little house of theirs with a glowing eye, the big eye, you know, Lucifer's eye, uh, flickering away there, and they don't even know who their neighbors are, and they don't really want to know what's happening around them. That's a fact of life, and this did not happen by accident either, folks. Nothing does when it comes to micromanagement and control.